Hello and welcome to the third episode in our quadcopter build series four. Now again if you have never built a quadcopter before then there's probably a couple of better series that you can go and watch. Quadcopter building for beginners series one and series two are available in the playlist on the channel and they cover in far more detail the steps that we're about to go through. In this build we're more focused on trying out this new flight controller. This is the Beta Flight F3 and also doing things with Connex HD FPV systems. But if you're interested in other stuff then go and have a look at those other series that I've talked about. In this video we're going to concentrate on the power system. So first of all we're going to plug our flight controller into the computer, make sure that it's happy. Always worthwhile doing that before you go too much further. That way if it doesn't work you can return it and the vendor's probably going to be more likely to replace it than if you've got lots of messy soldering all over it. Second thing we're going to do is test mount the flight controller onto the frame. Uh, this is the bottom part of the frame itself. Again, we're going to use this VLX 230C frame from Out of the Box Innovations. I'll put links to all the parts we're using down in the description if you're interested. Uh, the way the arms fit on here is their vertical arms and they kind of slot into the side. And that's where the motor goes. We're going to have to pop the ESC on the side and the flight controller kind of fits in the heart of everything. Now we're going to have to mount the flight controller slightly off the back of the plate uh, because we have to, as we talked about in the last video, we've got to not only solder things to the top of the board, we've also got to solder things to the bottom as well. So we are going to have to think about this a little bit because all the power for the ESCs is actually underneath. Then we're going to connect all the power wires. So we're going to have to make the arms up, have a rough idea where the motors are going to sit, which is kind of like that. Let me do it in a way where you can, that's probably how it's going to work. We're going to have to pop the ESCs onto the arms, probably somewhere like that. Hopefully, come on camera, hopefully something like that and uh, make off the motors onto the ESCs, trying to keep that vertical profile as thin as we can, because that's kind of the point of the frame. And then the ESC is going to have to go into the flight controller itself and be connected not only for the signal wires on the top, but the power wires at the bottom. Now, I'm probably going to have to mount the flight controller temporarily first and then clip each of these wires off just so I know how long they've got to be. So then I can start to solder everything up and then come back and do it. So I'll show you the steps I'm going through to figure that out because the flight controller is going to make that slightly more complicated than we have it. We're also going to connect the main battery connector. I'm going to um, solder on this thing here onto the flight controller as well so that we have power for the mains. The other thing I'm going to do is solder the power for the Connex. Now we are going to talk about the Connex high definition FPV system later in the series but for now all I'm worried about is the fact that we need to power this thing. Now in the manual for the Connex it shows that this thing will run 3 or 4S natively. So I'm going to wire these power cables directly into the same place as I connect the main power cables that's coming in for the battery and that will all have to fit underneath so we'll have to figure that out in this bit as well. Once we've done all that we'll solder the ESC and motor wires together. Again we don't have to worry too much about the order because we'll be able to uh, swap those round with BL Heli if the motors are turning in the wrong way and finally connect those signal wires onto the top of the ESC and by that point we'll have got to the end of the video and then next time we can look at more about the signal wires because in the signal wires we've got to think about that a little bit a couple of reasons I'm going to need a UART, a spare UART that I can get hold of to then connect the wires from the Connex to because the Connex will provide some telemetry information on its on-screen display but I'm going to need a hardware UART really to do that so I need to figure that out in a second when we plug it into the computer and we're also going to have to potentially connect the buzzer some external LEDs because that's always quite nice to do and also connect our little receiver now we're going to use that XM plus that I talked about before that's going to be an S bus receiver that's going to connect to these pins here so now we know what we're going to do, let's plug this little guy into the computer and let's see how it's configured and make sure it works okay. So we have Betaflight Configurator running, let's just plug this little guy in, see if it's going to work. That sounds like a very promising noise, COM5, click connect and let's have a quick look at the board. As I move the board around, let's put the nose down, left and right, rotate, 
fantastic. That's looking all very promising indeed. If we quickly go through each of the tabs, or the main tabs, uh, ports, remember this is how it's delivered. Nothing has really been set up. Uh, UART 1 is set to multi -B serial protocol. That will be for the onboard on-screen display that this board has. Again, we can't use that OSD because we're not using traditional FPV equipment. But in the last video, we talked about how you would wire that up if you had it. We do have two spare UARTs. We're going to need both of these. One of them is going to have to be turned on for the serial receiver because we're using SBUS. And we're probably going to have to use the other hardware one for the connection to the Connex system as well. Because the telemetry information we're going to have to set up is going to be Mavlink. But we'll come on to that in a later video. Configuration set for quad X, one shot 125. Now the speed controllers we're using will support D shot. I'll have to check the specs, but we'll probably start with D shot 150 uh, and move up, but we'll see what they will actually work as. V bats turned on, so is the current meter, which is great. That's because this flight controller again is its own power distribution board and support 25 amps continuously for each of the ESCs. Accelerometer is enabled. The things that are turned on are black box. SD card, again we're going to have to plug in an SD card for that to also work, and the on-screen display, which is what UART1 was all about. PID tuning looks like that. Receiver tab is going to have to be set and figured, because at the moment we don't have our receiver set up. We'll do that all in the next video. No mode configured at all, completely blank slate, so we'll do that. Motors and OSD, again we could configure the OSD in here, but unfortunately we can't right now because we're not going to use it. And last one is the CLI. Let's type in version to see what it's running. Okay, so it's the Betaflight F3 target, version 3.1, so it's a little bit old. We are using a later version than that. So if I disconnect, go into firmware, flasher, we'll have to make sure it's the Betaflight F3. 3.1.7 is the latest as I'm doing this. If I go and try and flash this, I'm going to have to use the Zadig drivers to uh, convert the DFU device into something that I can talk to. Um, so go and have a look. If you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, go and have a look at the USB flashing section of the Betaflight manual. It kind of talks about that. I'm probably going to update this then very quickly to 3.1.7 and then join me back at the bench and we'll continue with the setup. So here's the results of about 45 minutes worth of snipping and soldering and trying to get this as neat as I possibly can. If I lift this up and kind of show you how it's all together, at the moment I just put the arms on there so you can kind of see how it is. Um, if I just take one of the arms off, because that way I can kind of show you what it looks like, you can see that actually this flight controller fits absolutely fantastically in this frame. So uh, this was a good choice for the build, so thank you to all of those who made that suggestion. Now the way it's going to work here is that each of these ESCs are going to have to be connected onto the arms, and I'm also going to have to make off the final connections for the signals as well, because those signal pads are actually on the top. So that's the final thing I need to do before we finished. But let me quickly show you the steps I've gone through to get it to this point where Hopefully everything's going to work and um, nothing is kind of out of place. Now the first thing I did was put the flight controller in the right orientation and then I marked up the centre parts of each of the arms and also each of the ESCs. You'll notice here that I actually put, so this is arm 2, that's the front of the quad. You'll also notice that on the little um, piece here there's also a, two dots as well. And the reason I did that is because I was making off each of these ESCs and trying to figure out how long the cables needed to be and cut them and then that way when I came to solve them actually onto the flight controller itself I made sure that each one was in the right position. Now started with the power connections first I would always recommend whenever you're doing soldering like this first of all make sure that you have a nice big fat tip on your soldering iron uh, this is the Weller that I've been using for the best part of 30 years. Replace the tips when they start to misbehave and you need a, quite a bit of heat. So my tip is always solder up the positive terminal first and that will warm the board around the negative terminal and do the negative terminal separately. The reason for that is because the negatives on a flight controller like this are all connected together and it's like one big heat sink. So it takes a while to warm up. Doing the positive red wires first will give you the best chance of getting a good connection on your black wires secondly.
Now I've actually done it the other way around here, which is why I remembered that actually, you know what, that's the way I should have been doing it. From there on in, once I had all that done, it was a case of going around and connecting each of the ESCs with the pre-clipped leads onto the bottom of the flight controller. You will notice here that I have pre-tinned all the pads and I've pre-tinned the ends of the leads as well and that way it's just a case of getting the solder to flow between them rather than having to keep the heat on those pads for too long and potentially damaging the flight controller itself or lifting the pad. Once I've got each of those on, just following around again using those little dots that I've put on there to figure out which position they need to be in on the flight controller, then it starts to look a little bit like this. Last thing I did was then pop the connections and the power on for the connect system, pop that onto the side of the main piece, and we're pretty much towards the end of this part of the build. Now the next thing I need to do then is I'm just going to make off each of the signal cables for the ESCs in the appropriate corner because once I start connecting these ESCs onto the arms and once then I start putting the motors on and connecting the motor wires onto these pads on the ESCs then things start to get a bit trickier because as you've noticed when the arms are in place just the way that this um, frame works it's meaning that I'm going to have to be a little bit careful on how I do my soldering because it's covering up slightly the pieces I need. The S bus one's easy to get to. UART2, which is the one I'm going to need for my telemetry connection up to the connect system, is here. So I can get to them with these pieces in place. I'm just going to have to use a very fine tip soldering iron and make sure that I've got a very steady hand when we come to that piece. So let me just finish off and make these connections up and connect these ESCs into position. And then we'll come back and have a look at what that looks like and then we'll almost be at the end of this video and we can come back at the next time and start making off the signals and looking at the radio and receiver. So here we are with all of the main soldering done with the exception of the connection up to the UART for the OSD system that's going to be part of the Connex and also the receiver set up in here as well. Now we've got the buzzer and there's loads of different things that we need to do but now we have our ESCs installed in each corner and they can connect onto the arms and uh, hopefully be ready to pop the motors on as well. Now I'm tempted actually, although normally as part of the build, I would pop the motors on the arms and then make these three wires off onto the pads because at the moment the way this frame works is that the arms only really lock into position once you've got the top and bottom plates on. I'm very tempted not to connect the motors until we've done some of the signal pieces in the next video. But if you're building along with this series because you're interested in the Betaflight F3, I'd absolutely recommend connect your ESCs onto your arms, pop your motors on and solder on your leads from your motor to your ESC cover them up with a bit of heat shrink and you'll be ready to rock and roll. With us, I'm probably going to leave it like that to now and in the next one we'll come along, we'll do the receiver, we'll talk about setting up the radio and then once we've got that done, we'll also make sure that we have thought about how we're going to connect the UART to the Connex system and in between now and the next video, I'll also have a think about where on this frame we could actually mount an LED and buzzer strip. Because the thing that I am noticing here is it's a really, really nice little frame, but it's quite low profile. I'll just put the arms on here. Hopefully you can see it's quite a nice, thin little sandwich. And it does really nicely fit. I'll just put the ESCs into position where they're going to be. Everything is fitting in really, really beautifully. And I guess that's the benefit of having a flight controller like this where the power distribution board is actually part of it and you don't have to have multiple boards. I think if you did have multiple boards in this frame, you'd have to think about this a little bit more. So I'd recommend if you're going to have a look at this frame, then I would definitely look at using something like the Betaflight F3 or something with an integrated power distribution board because that to me uh, is a very neat clean install and all of that is going to be hid away inside the chassis hopefully out of harm's way. So join me in the next video where we'll do all that signal stuff and finish up the build before we go on in the video after that to looking at how we're going to play with the Connex.
Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. We try and release at least two videos a week, usually a quick tip on a Tuesday and a more in-depth video on a Friday. And sometimes we manage to get a few more out as well. If you're interested in radio control, then the playlists are useful to have a look at. Anything that's called Introduction To is an organized set of videos that teach you from first principles about the subject that you're interested in. But we also have information about the majority of popular open source flight controllers, how to build quadcopters, fixed wing models, reviews, setups, unboxing, all kinds of things in here as well. So if you haven't already had a look at the playlist, then I'd recommend going have a look through here to see if there's anything that takes your fancy. Finally, we do also provide updates through things like Twitter, Instagram, and also post all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse as well. So if you like what we're doing here on YouTube, have a look at those things and subscribe to us there, and you'll find out what we're up to in advance of the videos coming out here on the channel.